What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here, delarose.com. That's D E L A R R O Z.com. We have been going through Spider Man Loves Mary Jane lately, if you've been watching the channel. And I loved that first volume. And I ha this is part of the magic of YouTube right here, is that I have not actually recorded the review for the second volume yet because I have it somewhere and I don't know where the book is. <laughs> so I'm actually going to record this, but you're actually going to watch the review for the second volume first. And uh, it's going to be like a crazy uh, time paradox thing. But uh, this is volume three. And a lot changes with this volume from the last one. And I'll get to why in a second. Now, these books are, as mentioned in the first video, uh, in a digest size format. So they're smaller than standard size comics, which really annoys me because I actually would prefer to have this in large oversized art version, just like I prefer to have everything else. But since this is how they're collected, this is how we will read it. Now, this collects Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane 14 through 20, wrapping up the first series, and then Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane Season 2, they called it, 1 through 5. And you'll notice something, which I had no idea this was the case uh, when I actually picked these up, that Sean McKeever wrote uh, actually all of the first volume here, but Terry Moore was brought on for the second volume, and I actually looked into these books and bought these books originally just because I saw Terry Moore's art on this third cover. Um, and I had no idea that he actually wrote the series inside. And he actually did the covers for all five issues on that series. So, very exciting stuff. It made me warm and happy inside to see that. Now, I came to like this series so much, uh, without Terry Moore's influence on it, uh, with Sean McKeever and, and to, uh, to Takeshi Miyazawa's art on it, that, um, I would have got this regardless. It's, it's just awesome. But uh, that's that. There is a typo on the uh, <clears throat> intro page here. It says uh, Takeshi Miyazawa does page uh, the art for issues 14 and 15. And David Hahn does, it says issues 14 through 15. But they meant 16 through 20. They didn't catch that. That's okay. Doesn't, doesn't impact my enjoyment of the book. Nice little page to start uh, refreshing everybody what happens. And I guess we can read that. Here we go. I'll do like my announcer voice. Mary Jane has become increasingly close with her nerdy but sweet study partner and friend, Peter Parker. However, thanks to her infatuation with Spider-Man, she hasn't been consciously aware of her feelings for Peter, who feels the same way towards MJ. Until recently, unfortunately, her realization has come too late, as Peter is now dating Gwen Stacy, a vibrant and genuinely nice transfer student. But all is not peachy for the young couple. Peter will often desert Gwen at a moment's notice, covering his absences with weak excuses. So Gwen has turned to Mary Jane, her only friend, to figure out why he does it. Fortunately for Mary MJ, she doesn't have to try to help Gwen feel better about Peter because Gwen decides she's going to deliver him an ultimatum. Either Peter tells her why he's always disappearing, or they're through. So that's where this is up to this point. And Mary Jane's kind of happy about this. So she's kind of like, hey... This is going to be a breakup. Uh, there's a lot of plot lines going on throughout this. Just lots of little interwe interwoven character drama that, that you really can't read this book without reading the first two. Uh, it, it's You've got so much dynamic between Liz Allen and um, MJ and Peter and Gwen. And we find out that, that Gwen kind of knows the secret. What's interesting is the way that um, Sean McKeever writes it. He, uh, he kind of doesn't let the audience know that it's really a different secret than the actual secret is uh, for from this point uh, at the beginning of it. But eventually we find it out. And uh, what happens is everybody kind of knows Peter's got a secret. And so they start teasing him about it, but just like high school always happens. And I love Miyazawa's art. It just feels so good. Um, it You know, I could read this kind of this kind of art all day long, and it makes me happy. But the relationship keeps going and never really materializes all the way we've got mj upset we've got uh gwen stacy upset and um gwen stacy kind of realizes at some point that peter loves mj and and leaves him so everybody gets broken up at this point again and then peter uh starts dating firestar uh who is a redhead and super cute and they go on little superhero -y adventures together uh, meanwhile, uh, Harry is trying to get MJ back and actually does for a bit. He was at the beginning of the series. Super cute drawings all the way around. The, the pacing on this is really what makes it a joy. It's so fast, and that changes in volume two, which I'll get to in a second. But this starts, 
Then there's a weird plot thread that happens where like Felicia Hardy shows up, who is Black Cat in the main Spider-Man series. And she just kind of goes up and she's super aggressive and is like, I want my man, Flash Thompson. She's ready to fight Liz Allen over him. And then eventually she's like, I want Harry Osborn. So she kind of just plows through this and there's not much of a point to her. It's kind of like a dangling plot thread that doesn't go anywhere like a lot of the others do. Um, so I could have done without it. Maybe maybe they meant to have this continue on a little longer uh, and it just didn't happen. I don't know what the case was, uh, but seemed an unnecessary uh, point. But Peter is very upset uh, through this and doesn't want to give Firestar his secret identity and eventually ends up breaking up with Firestar because, uh, you know, he loves MJ at the end of the day. But the, what what's sad is is this is about to wrap up here. And again, this, this kind of lends to me and my uh, idea that, like, uh, they were con planning on continuing on and then for some reason didn't because uh, they don't really make that love confession to each other to wrap up the romance story. You've got, you've just got dangling threads still, that, like it's still continuing. And it's just sad because I would have really liked a nice ending at this point. Um, and, it, you know, this is, this is where it goes. Like they're about to, they're about to degenerately handhold but it doesn't happen, um, and you don't see it, and that's that's the end of that, and then the, then the series just abruptly ends in this, so I don't know. That's when Terry Moore takes over and does his own series. Now, Terry Moore's series, uh, and this is Terry Moore's art here, which you don't get to see in color very often. Uh, he has one colorist who does his covers uh, for his own books, and they're kind of a different style, so it's very odd to see his art with um, kind of standard comics uh, colors on it. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I still like it, of course. Uh, and who did the art on the Terry Moore version of this book, which went for five issues? Uh, Craig Rousseau, who I'm not familiar with, but nice art, all the same. It's very different again. It's not, it's not, not very, um, not very, uh, uh, I would say manga influenced compared to the other one. But, uh, so we get something different. And Terry Moore's pacing is way different. He has very much a standard comic pacing, whereas we had manga pacing, before so this book just is a completely different vibe to it and it centers around mary jane uh by herself again and her acting and there's a lot of inside jokes going on a lot of high schooly jokes um that terry moore really drills into the characters on that level and instead of really hyper focusing on the romance like sean mckeever did which i kind of expected terry moore to do to be honest um he develops this plot where it's really just like mj coming into terms with herself and, and her self-confidence uh, there's a lot of people who are making fun of her, and she's feeling isolated by that. Uh, a very, it's a very high school uh, vibe because that's the, a lot of people feel like that in high school, of course. But again, it, like the romance really dials down a lot, and that was a little shocking and jarring reading this uh, right after the other. Still enjoyable, and of course, his art is wonderful when you get to see it. <clears throat> so there's a plot here where somebody's put up like an evil website of uh, you know just basically bullying e-bullying mj and everybody kind of calls her limo girl which is an inside joke through the whole thing here lots of little jokes like that and little little fun puns and things like that because terry moore is very good about that sort of things tons of little pop culture references from 2008 <laughs> which you know you look back at those 12 years later it's kind of it's kind of interesting but uh, a very different vibe very different storyline and everything kind of reset you don't really have this like deep peter relationship with mj rolling through this um and so you don't really get a nice fulfillment of what happened in volume one which is kind of sad because again that just didn't end all the way proper and they find out who the the gal is who did it uh, like a scooby-doo style investigation at the end and mj kind of forgives the girl and is the the bigger girl because she's she's mj and she's perfect and uh and then of course that's it so very, very uh, stark contrast from the first one, where this is very plot driven, not 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 so much like relationship driven. And then we get one scene uh, at the end where Peter's just hanging with MJ on the doorstep and being nice. But again, we just don't get the love confession. We don't get the like closure for the romance. And so this really needed another volume or needed something to close it out. They just, uh, I guess they canceled it twice. Is how it went and that that's the one major criticism i've got to have of the city series is called spider-man loves mary jane but there's not enough spider-man love and mary jane in it there should have been a wrap-up issue of two or two of really showing spidey and peter like doting on her 
and making everybody happy uh, to really end it and give that fulfilling ending. You know, that's, uh, that's just how it goes. Otherwise, I had a ton of fun with it. Um, I wish this would have been a thing that continued on, and, and obviously they were expecting it to continue on, and that's why they didn't end. Uh, and that's uh, that's just kind of the way comics go a lot of time. But highly recommend this series. This is some of the best Spider-Man material there is. Uh, I love both writers on this, and even though they're very drastically different styles, uh, I, I still uh, give this my stamp of approval. 9 out of 10. Good stuff. We'll see you soon.